Hey everybody, it's Dr. Sean Talbot here. Hey, uh, I thought I would do something a little bit different this week. Um, I get tons of email questions um, about stress, about vigor, about mental wellness, about physical health, about all sorts of different things, um, about Amari products. Um, and what I thought I would do, some of the questions I just quickly just answer. Uh, some of the questions I forward to our product support people, which is product questions at amari.com. Uh, and they're really fast about answering some of the some of the sort of frequently asked questions that come in on a regular basis. We have a great big database of uh, of, of questions that, that the that the customer service team can can pull from. Uh, but some of the questions get a little bit complicated sometimes. And when they do, I like to save them um, and then you know answer them you know in detail when I can. But what I thought I would try to do is uh, start a weekly video uh, answer session where I actually get into the nuances of some of those questions. So let me see, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six questions that, uh, that I've saved over the last week or so um, that I wanna get into a little bit and, and, uh, and, and, and try to answer for you guys. So, and I think that you know, by doing it this way, uh, the questions that one person asks might be uh, applicable to some other things that, that, that you might ask or you know, might, come up, might come up in your world. So uh, this first one is, is from, uh, is from uh, somebody named Dana. Um, it was forwarded to Jamie and Jamie sent it to me. Um, and it's a question, it's a long question, so I won't read the whole thing. But the, the, the question basically boils down to she's trying to figure out the difference between um, Amare's adult fundamentals product, which is three products, uh, Mentabiotics for the gut, Menta Sync for the axis, and Menta Focus for the brain. So three products for adults, to help to modulate the entire gut brain axis. It helps with microbiome modulation. It helps with gut integrity. It helps with immune system priming. It helps with inflammatory balance. It helps with neurotransmitter modulation. It helps with brain activation. So it really is doing everything that you want it to do in terms of optimizing your entire gut brain axis. And the reason that's important is because that's gonna help with mood and energy and mental focus and stress resilience and, and you know all the things that help us feel better and help us move up that mental wellness continuum. Uh, the kids product is called Kids Fundamentals and it's one product. Um, it's one powder and it's fruit punch flavored um, and it's, it's, uh, it is uh, sugar free and it tastes great. My son drinks it every single morning before he goes to school. Um, and she's trying to figure out the difference between the two. So both of those products, adult fundamentals, kids fundamentals, do the same general thing, which is everything that I just said about optimizing communication across that entire gut brain axis. The kids product does it a little bit differently because one of the problems that we had when we wanted to make one single product for kids is the fact that um, some of the ingredients in, uh, in Menta Sync um, taste terrible. Um, and they smell bad too. We, we use two ingredients in there that are different forms of, um, of a short chain fatty acid called butyrate. Um, and if you've ever smelt um, kind of like stinky cheese, uh, the reason that cheese smells like cheese is because it's giving off this short chain fatty acid called butyrate. Um, we have that in the Menta Sync product and we have it in a capsule so you can't really taste it or smell it. You just swallow it and you know it's gone. We, we, the reason we have it there is that short chain fatty acids are really, really important for a variety of different functions across the gut brain axis. Um, they, they help to, 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 to support good bacteria. Um, the kind of bacteria that we're trying to grow, the bifidobacterium, um, those species will make short chain fatty acids. The short chain fatty acids help with neurotransmitter balance. They help with, uh, the, the, they have an anti-inflammatory effect. They have a, uh, a metabolic effect where uh, they can help with your with your insulin control and your blood sugar modulation. Um, they help with uh, signaling to the to the brain to the to the neurons and the and the glial cells in the brain. Um, they serve as a fuel source for the actual lining of your gastrointestinal tract, so they can help maintain good gut integrity and and maybe you know even can be therapeutic for people who have leaky gut. Um, so they do lots and lots of different things. That's why we have them in Menta Sync. But when we try to put them into the kids' fundamentals, we have a challenge, 
we have a challenge in that they they, they taste bad and they smell bad. Um, and the stability isn't great when they're open to the air like that. And so we needed to figure out something. If we can't add them, no kid wants to drink fruit flavored, cheese flavored uh, uh, juice in the morning, right? That's a, that's a non-starter. And so what we needed to do is figure out a way to get that product to have the same short chain fatty acid benefit as the, as the adult product. And what we ended up doing was we found a prebiotic source. Um, it's an isomalto oligosaccharide that we call isofiber. Um, isofiber will specifically feed those bifidobacterium microbiome bugs as to make more and more and more short chain fatty acids. So we can't add the short chain fatty acids, but we can add some that gets your body to produce more of those short chain fatty acids. And so a couple of things that we found out as we, as we made that discovery, and we actually uh, filed some trademarks and things like that around that, um, the fact that now the kids product is having the kids make more of these short chain fatty acids, that isofiber actually has a little bit of a sweet flavor to it. So we were able to make that product sugar free and it gave us the brainstorm to say, haha, let's also add that to the adults mentabiotics. And that way we can have the adult product making more short chain fatty acids. And because of that slightly sweet flavor without sugar, we were able to make that product sugar free as well. So it ended up being a win, win, win all the way across um, so that the kids still get all the same benefits across the gut brain axis, but we're, we're, but we're just doing it through a, through a different set of, uh, set of mechanisms. The other one other change in the kids fundamentals that differs from the adult fundamentals is that in that, um, in that adult product, in our Mentafocus product for the brain, we've got an ingredient that's a very unique pomegranate extract that's been studied for helping with memory and acuity and speed of processing in the brain, which are sort of um, anti-dementia kinds of effects. We can see the brain is lighting up in areas that are associated with memory and, 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 uh, and, and processing. And so that's kind of an anti-dementia effect that adults can definitely benefit from but uh, kids don't necessarily need that. So that was something that we were able to leave out of the kids product. But otherwise, same exact strains of, of probiotic bacteria that, are, that, that have been clinically validated for helping with stress and helping with anxiety and helping with, with depression. Same prebiotic blends to feed those bacteria. Same patent pending blend of phytobiotics, these, these flavonoid sources that help across the whole gut brain axis. Same digestive performance blend, same immune system priming blend across those two adult versus kids products. So that's the difference. And they might look different uh, the way the labels are because the labels are spread across three products in the adult and they're, and they're crammed into one product on the, on the kids. So that's why it's sometimes confusing to compare them uh, sort of apples to apples, but they have the same benefits. Okay, so there's that one. Um, because, because I just mentioned about that pomegranate extract, let me jump to this question from Courtney. Um, she asked a question about, I wanted to know what you can tell me about Amari products and dementia. What would you recommend? What studies have been done? And uh, do you know anyone who's had results uh, with this health concern? Um, so yeah, I, there's lots and lots of people sharing their experiences all across Facebook and in the meetings that we do around the country um, about not necessarily that, 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 you know, we don't wanna go out there and say that the products are gonna, you know, prevent or cure Alzheimer's or dementia or, you know, those sorts of things. But certainly we can change the functionality of somebody. If somebody is struggling with something like Alzheimer's, in a certain sense, the damage might already be done. We're not gonna be able to reverse the plaque damage in the brain, but we can certainly help those people with their energy and their focus and their motivation and their ability to sort of do their, what we call ADLs, activities of daily living, going through their life in a way that, that, is, that is better for them. Now, those kinds of things we absolutely can change. And, the, and the, the, the place that I would have people start is with the entire fundamentals pack, because you know we talk a lot about the second brain and how a lot of what's happening up here in the first brain is really being derived in terms of inflammation and neurotransmitter signaling and those sorts of things. So if we can get the gut right, that's gonna have a benefit in the, in the brain up here. Um, specifically, you know, if this were one of my family members that were struggling with a, you know, a dementia sort of an issue, I would get them on fundamentals, but then I would, I, would, I would have them order an extra bottle of Mentafocus 
focus so that they could double up on that, taking it morning and evening. And the reason for that is that there are really good clinical trials showing that higher flavonoid intakes, fla higher intake of polyphenols from red wine, from grapes, from blueberries, from citrus, from you know all those foods that are sort of brightly colored, and giving you that those vibrant. Um, Vibrant colors are indicative of high phytonutrient content, and flavonoids in particular seem to be, at least in the in the in the population studies that have been done, um, and they're 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 very anti dementia, anti Alzheimer's. Uh, they they improve cardiovascular effects, which improves blood flow, which improves signaling to the brain. Uh, there's a change in neurotransmitter balance with a higher intake of flavonoids in terms of you know, better levels of serotonin and dopamine and norepinephrine and these things that sort of wake up our brain and get us to focus and get us to pay attention. Um, and then the pomegranate extract that I just talked about a few minutes ago, that's been shown in, in, in trials to help activate the areas of the brain associated with memory and at the same time time, calm the brain. So those sound like they might be opposite things that you're activating and calming at the same time, but that's actually what we want. We want the brain to be awake, but to be calm and collective so that we can focus. We could wake up the brain with something like caffeine or another stimulant, but then you might be too jittery to actually focus and make use of that, that faster processing. So the, the Menta Focus product can do that and I would do it AM, PM along with the fundamentals because um, I, I, I probably neglected to say this, there's also really good data to show that microbiome modulation is associated with with you know, overall brain function, but there's biotech companies and pharmaceutical companies that are looking specifically at microbiome modulation as potentially, potentially a place where we can prevent Alzheimer's somewhere down the line. You know, and that, that set of data is really, really exciting. I won't go into it right now, but it's something definitely to keep our eye on. Um, we have a question here from a clinical psychologist and psychotherapist, and I get this kind of question pretty often, whether you're a, whether you're a therapist or a social worker or, or any kind of healthcare practitioner. Um, the, the kinds of products that we have at Amare are, are very interesting, right? There's never been a coordinated gut-brain access system before. Um, there are lo lots of benefits for, from mental wellness perspective, but also physical health benefits of getting your gut-brain access modulated. Not to mention the targeted therapies that we have with our mental therapeutics, the foundational nutrition that we have with our mental essentials line or our, or our GBX functional foods line. There's a lot of reason that healthcare practitioners would look into our products. But one of the questions that comes up is, you know, they love the science, they love the effects that people are getting, you know, fairly quickly in terms of the phased benefits where some of these benefits come the first day and some come the first week and some come the first month. Those are all things they want to deliver to their patients. But a lot of these healthcare practitioners, they have a uh, 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 a hesitancy about recommending a specific product. Um, and, and especially they have a hesitancy about actually promoting and, and, and getting a commission on a product. They feel like they're, you know, that they shouldn't be, you know, trying to make a sale kind of a deal. And I, I you know, I totally get that as a scientist, that's really not the way that we're that we're necessarily trained. We're not necessarily inclined to ask for the sale. You know, you might feel you might feel pushy. You might feel like you're imposing yourself on somebody else. But I want you to kind of flip it around and say, look, you're you know, you charge for your services, right? You have to do that to make a living. This is a way that you can and 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 the reason that you're doing that is because you're you're legitimately trying to do the best thing for that client or that patient. You want them to get better. You want them to improve themselves. You want them to have better mental mental wellness and physical health. So, you know, we're trying to do things to help them. And this is another way that we can help them. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's one thing to say to them, you know, what you need to do is go get some probiotics because the microbiome is important for these things, or it's important for you to control your stress and improve your stress resilience. Those are all, those are all, you know, normal things, but if you recommend that they go get the product, you know, it's, it's once removed from you, or maybe it's twice removed from you if they have to go and talk to somebody else. And then that person makes it makes separate recommendations. You might miss the opportunity for that patient or that client to actually get the product that has the clinical validation, that has the research-based ingredients, that has the intellectual property protection, that has the, the right purity and the right potency and things like that. So like that, that 
chance of missing where they might select another product that doesn't have the efficacy or they might select another product that doesn't have the right levels of the ingredients. That is a, that's a risk that you're deciding to take and putting something in between you and the patient. So what I really try to get them to think of is like, it, you know, it's not, an, it's not an ethical lapse that you're recommending a product that they buy from you or they, or they access through your website. It's actually an ethical lapse if you don't recommend that product to them, if you don't you know, really hook them up with that direct sale because you don't know what they're going to do when they leave your office. You know, another aspect to it, and we see this a lot from chiropractors, for, you know, um, especially a lot of times patients will come into a chiropractic situation and they'll, they'll be there for three visits or six visits or 12 visits, and then they get better and you never see them again. Having the link with the products is something where that customer or that patient or that client, however you want to refer to them, is now linked back to you. So there's a, there's a tether, so to speak, where they're getting that product shipped to them every single month to maintain their microbiome or to you know, help with their stress resilience or to help with their baseline nutrition, whatever the case may be. That's an opportunity for you to continue reaching out to give them education to give them additional programs, to check in with them, to see how they're doing, to see if they've, if they've relapsed at all, right? So that sort of partnership in the client, patient, physician, healthcare practitioner relationship, I think is really, really important. And as long as it's, as long as it's upfront and you're saying, look, here's what the product does, here's what it costs, here's how you can get it at a, you know, at a wholesale pricing, here's how you can do subscribe and save or bundle and save so that you can save money. It makes it very transparent so that the patient doesn't feel and the healthcare practitioner doesn't feel that there's any sort of, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, 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 an undue weird relationship that, you know, that needs to go on there. So I think there's definitely ways to do this if you think about it the right way, that you're not necessarily trying to make a sale, but you are trying to help that, that client or that patient get better and, and continue improving themselves along that mental wellness continuum. Um, we've got a question here from Rhonda. Um, she asked a question about, it's, a, it's, um, it's kind of a long question that boils down to immune system regulation. Um, you know, and we could put in a lot of immune system dysfunctions into the, into the box here where they're, where, where they're, where they're talking about a, um, a, um, uh, uh, sort of a, sort of a, uh, uh, a white blood cell count kind of a condition. Um, but what, what they're, what they're asking about is how does immune system regulation, uh, how do Amari products do immune system regulation and how that can help somebody, whether we're talking about mental wellness or physical health. So a, a lot of the signaling that goes back and forth between our two brains uh, goes through the axis. And a big part of the axis is your immune system. A lot of times we don't think about our immune system until we're sick. And we only think of our immune system as if it's a shield to protect us from viruses and bacteria and toxins and things like that. And it, and it certainly plays that role. But the immune system is also a surveillance organ. It also is a communication network. It takes signals from your two brains back and forth between each other, and then serves almost like the Pony Express and takes that information out to other parts of the body. So the immune system can talk to the microbiome and then transmit that information to your adrenal glands or to your pancreas or to your thyroid or to your glial cells or wherever, right? It's signaling goes back and forth, you know, uh, sort of overlapping all over the place. And so many of our products will address the immune system because it's an important linkage between all of that communication. There's two ways that we can do that. One way is to go directly to the immune system. So if you have an underactive immune system or an overactive immune system, the process of priming the immune system will take it from low activity, such as you know, stress-induced immune suppression, and bring it up to normal. Um, it can also take an overactive immune system, such as if you have allergies or you have autoimmune conditions, overactive immune system where your immune system is attacking lots of things that it shouldn't attack, and bring it down to normal. That's priming it down to that balance point. The concept of priming, we can do with alpha glucans that we get from different mushroom species. We can do it with beta glucans that come from specialized yeast extracts. The immune system will see those compounds and will, will engulf them and will use them as a way to help it pay attention to what it's supposed to attack, viruses, for example, and then ignore things that it shouldn't be attacking in the first place, such as 
your mucous membranes or your your cartilage lining or you know whatever the case may be whatever your whatever your whatever your problem seems to be um, so that's one way we can do it directly something that's happening directly to the immune system to make sure that it's properly primed and it fights what it's supposed to fight and ignores what it's supposed to ignore we can also have a similar effect indirectly by modulating the microbiome because the microbiome is really what trains the immune system in the first place. It's what orchestrates everything that the immune system does. The microbiome is signaling the immune system, telling it what to attack and what to ignore. And so you can get an immune system to benefit from either of those, but our product line actually does both of those, direct immune system priming and indirect priming through microbiome modulation. So we're getting, we're getting a lot of, of, of bang for the buck, so to speak. So if you were doing fundamentals, for example, that would be addressing both of those, direct immune system system priming and indirect through microbiome modulation. So that would be a way to go for something like that. And then I've got two more that I want to cover real quickly. Um, Dale asked a question about stevia uh, across our products. Um, you know, now, so, you, so, so stevia is a, is a natural plant extract. The stevia leaf, once you extract it, uh, or concentrate it, uh, which are which are two different ways of getting the sweetness compounds um, in the stevia to you know give us that sweet sensation. Um, we, we we use that in several. So we use it, you know. We use it in our Energy Plus product, uh, and we do that so that we can reduce the sugar load across our across our products. People don't want sugar, but they want sweet. And the way to do that without giving you artificial sweeteners like sucralose or saccharin or NutraSweet or aspartame or something like that is to use stevia. The reason I like stevia is because it gives you that sweetness, but a lot of people will notice this. You'll also get this bitter back note sometimes. I'm really, really sensitive to it. So even a little bit of stevia, I get that bitter note. Um, and you know, some people don't like the bitter note and you know, but tough, <laughs> we actually have to have that. Um, you can't get zero bitter note unless you purely, purely extract uh, the, the, the rebocides from the, from the stevia. And then you're getting to something that's really, really ultra pure. I actually want to have that bitter back note. And the reason for that is because there are taste receptors in your gut and it's beneficial for them to taste or to sense that bitter back note, it actually, we think it helps with blood sugar control. We think that it helps with microbiome modulation for that bitter note to be there, that it tells your body that this is a plant extract, that it's a natural thing, that it's not a synthetic and your body doesn't get as confused as it might with, 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 with some of those uh, very potent uh, artificial sweeteners. Um, the other reason, the other thing that, that Dale was asking about stevia is that she wanted to know like what kind of stevia we use. And it really depends on the product. The amount of and the type of stevia that we use will differ depending on the product and differing depending on several things. What kind of flavor profile are we going for? Are there other flavors that are that are in the mix here? Is it an unflavored product? Is it chocolate, vanilla, fruit flavored, whatever? Um, and then what other kinds of bioactives are that are there? One of the things that is challenging about flavoring natural products is that once you get into in, into flavoring, you can you have you have a sweetness level, you have a bitterness level, you have a a fruit flavor level or a, or a, or, or, you know, a flavor profile you're going for. And then any change to any of those individually will change the others. So sometimes you can taste something and go, yeah, this prototype needs to be a little sweeter. And you put in a little bit more stevia and it actually makes everything not sweeter. It makes it bitter. Um, or the or the flavors get flat, or the flavors get too accentuated, and now it now it's now it's too acidic, or it's or it's too tart, or something like that. So there's a lot of this modulation that needs to go through, and we'll select the right stevia, the right extract strength, and the right sort of you know uh, milling process to make sure that it's appropriate for the product that it's going into. So across the products, we use a really low amount. We don't want the products to be overly sweet. Um, sometimes if you try to make them overly sweet, it actually accentuates some of that organic note of the other bioactives. And that's not a good flavor profile either. It's not as simple as just saying, let's add more until it masks everything. Sometimes adding more can make the overall product taste worse. Uh, so it's a lot of sort of black magic that goes on, but 
but we use different extracts and different strength levels across all those different products. So it's hard for us to say this is the exact one that we use. Uh, and then the last one, I get a lot of questions about something called MTHFR. Right, and people will think that that's that, that that's a swear word or something like that, but it isn't. It's um, it's a it's a genetic polymorphism involved in methylation reactions in the body. If you ha you know, is, people will say I have the the MTHFR gene, uh, and what they mean by that is that they've tested positive for one of a variety of different what we call SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphisms. It means that your ability to to methylate, your ability to use folic acid, your ability to use um, uh, vitamin B12 um, it is, is, is lessened compared to somebody who doesn't have one of those SNPs. It doesn't mean that it's zero. It means that it might be 30% less efficient or 10% less efficient, or, or if it's really bad, 70% less efficient, but it's not, it's not, it's not 100% less efficient. It's not like you can't do any methylation. The reason methylation is important is because that's a, that's a, a, an aspect of biochemistry that's involved in virtually every aspect of metabolism, including neurotransmitter synthesis. Um, and so, you know, if we're, if we're processing serotonin and dopamine and norepinephrine and things like that for our mental wellness and for our motivation and for our mood, we really want to make sure that our methylation is up to snuff. And so people sometimes who, who have this, this uh, MTHFR um, um, SNP will we'll sometimes say, um, I can't have folic acid. I have to have methylated folate. And that's true. You'll use methylated folate at a much higher level because you can't do the conversion process of folic acid into methylfolate to be used for those methylation reactions. Across our product line, we, we, use, we use folic acid in Vita GBX adult and we use it in our Sleep Plus product. Um, in most versions of those products, you should see the methylated folate version coming out. You know, we, we, we had to do some stability studies to find out if methylfolate was gonna play well in those formulations. And we finally figured that out. We finally figured out which one we can use so that we get a good good shelf life. Methylated folate is, is usually very, very, um, shelf instable, it, it has very poor stability. And so like, you know, you could buy a product and it, it actually doesn't have any of that methylated folate in there anyway, because it's broken down over the course of the shelf life of that product. So we use methylated B12. Now we're now using methylated folate across those two products, Sleep Plus and Vita GBX. In the kids Vita GBX, we started right off with, with, uh, with, with methylated versions of those B vitamins. Um, but the important thing to consider is to go even beyond looking at methylated sources of B vitamins in your products. Uh, that's important and we do that. Um, but the more important thing is to find out what the source of these methylated cofactors is in the first place. And it's your microbiome. If you get your microbiome balanced, you're gonna produce all the folate, all the B12, most of the B vitamins that your body needs anyway. And so you don't even have to think about supplementing with the right thing because in effect, your body is able to absorb those methylated cofactors from the gut and use them for whatever methylation reactions that you need to at full 100% efficiency, no matter what your MTHFR status is in terms of what your, what your SNP profile looks like. So it's almost like because of the microbiome, we're able to do an end run around that kind of you know, dysfunctional aspect of your unique metabolism, right? It's, I mean, this is one of the ways in which the microbiome is completely changing everything that we understand about human health. You know, here's something that used to be a problem for lots of people. And just by modulating your microbiome, we're able to get around that. It's not even a problem anymore at all. So, you know, there's lots and lots of good stuff that's happening here at Amare. We're really on the cutting edge of science in so many different ways. I love to be able to come on here and share this kind of stuff with you. Um, and that, you know, this enabled me to get into a little more detail than I'm able to on the emails. But if you do have questions, make sure you're hitting up our product um, questions team, productquestions at amare.com. Uh, they'll be able to answer those questions very quickly for you. And then anything like these that need to get escalated to have a little bit more of a, of a detailed response, they'll, they'll send those over to me and I'll, and I'll do this again, uh, maybe this time next week. Okay. Thanks a lot, you guys. Appreciate you tuning in. Bye-bye.